And now I'd like to invite my next guest on Startup Central. Very media reticent, but he's agreed to do this interview for ET now in Startup Central. The managing director of Sequoia Capital, Mohit Bhatnagar, is with us. Hi, Mohit. Thank you for agreeing to do this, but uh, how couldn't you? There's so much that's happening in the startup ecosystem. I remember when we launched this show last June, we used to keep remarking that how startups are living in a different world altogether, parallel dunya mein, so much excitement, so much uh, optimism. And, you know, COVID-19 turned out to be the black swan that uh, no, obviously nobody saw coming. But things have started looking up, startups are reimagining, the government is giving priority status to startups, founders have risen to the challenge and you're also seeing large M&As take place. Absolutely, Nantra. Thanks, thanks for the opportunity uh, to allow us to do this and couldn't agree with you more. Uh, we are inherently optimistic people and the internet industry gives us a lot of reason to be so. Absolutely. And you know, it is of course going to turn out to be one of the, it is one of the world's largest uh, consumer internet uh, spaces to be in on this planet. Uh, but Mohit, you know, before we go any further on reimagining startups, I do want to get your views on the news of the week, the news of the month, perhaps of the news of COVID-19, the massive acquisition uh, by the Decacorn, by Jews of White Hat. So much to be talked about because not only is EdTech the new normal, but what a fantastic story of by Jews plus White Hat, which, you know, has had a two year uh, success story, ARR of $155 million, now a buyout of $300 million. And it's great for you guys at Sequoia Capital being an early investor. Yeah, look, uh, my partner GV and a lot of folks at Sequoia have worked very closely from, with Baiju from the very beginning and uh, have been involved in these kinds of important strategic crucible moments as we call them. But isn't it wonderful? Uh, you know, historically, most acquisitions happened when a company was trying to get into a new market or a non-tech company was trying to acquire tech talent or product capability. But it's so wonderful to see a tech company, uh, Baiju, successful in its own right, making the decision to buy versus build because they want to speed up their entry to this new segment, which is programming for children. And so it's a real maturity, a sign of maturity of our markets where tech companies will buy other tech companies in order to expand their product proposition. So do you think this is uh, the start of that trend? Do you, do you see a lot of this perhaps happening? You know, honestly, we should go back uh, to see where we've come from in order for me to answer this question to you, for you. You know, uh, 10 years back, uh, if you totaled up the entire valuations or market cap of all private tech players, uh, you would have something like $2 billion. Fast forward to 2020, and if you just bottoms up add up all the tech valuations of all the companies that have grown up from the startup ecosystem, this is minus the large IT services players, if you will, that number is now close to 87 billion. So in a short period of 10 years, 2 billion of market cap across all our tech startup ecosystem has now become 87 billion. And what's more is if you fast forward another 10 years, in 2030, this number is likely to be over 500 billion. So absolutely, Anantara, you should expect that as companies get larger, there will be a lot more of this consolidation and richer, higher valuation uh, M&A. Wow, those are like, I'm still not able to digest the figures that you're giving us. So, you know, we have tech startups, tech companies worth $87 billion today, and you're expecting this to grow to that astronomical figure which I'm not even able to repeat right now in a very short span of time. So you're obviously seeing a lot of innovation on ground and a lot of interest for Indian tech companies, right? Yeah, and you know, many folks rightly so will say tech valuations are hardly the right metric to see where the progress is being made in a particular industry. And all you have to do is look at the underlying consumer metrics to see what is driving these very large companies getting created. Uh, today, India has over 500 million folks who are on the in mobile internet. That number is going to grow to closer to 800 million or towards a billion in the next 10 years. If I looked at some of the subsectors within it, 
it was just wonderful for me to see a statistic that suggested that India this year, in 2020, will buy up to about $35 billion of products and services online. That number used to be a paltry 5 billion in 2010. So it's already grown from five to 35. And folks are projecting that that number will get to 200 billion of products and services bought online in the next 10 years. So when so many consumers are now turning to the internet to purchase and discover and uh, consume content and services, then it's hardly a surprise that you'll see so much market cap getting created on the back of changed consumer behavior towards the internet. And you know, uh, what one has to uh, notice and talk about as well is that how COVID-19 uh, forced or accelerated a lot of the business plans, right? What it's also led to is a new normal. So if I can go back to the Baiju's example, uh, you know, edtech is the new normal. And to be fair to Baiju's as well, it is the world's most valuable edtech startup. It also reinvented for COVID-19. It started, for example, the live classes, uh, 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 you know, for K-12, etc. during the lockdown, sensing a massive opportunity. You know, is that something that you've also seen? And we must commend that kind of maturity as well. Look at Unacademy. Unacademy, for example, is another large edtech startup that also reinvented itself. Topper recently has done the same and therefore invest, uh, impressed uh, investors too. Yeah, we'll talk about education in a minute. But, you know, more broadly to your point, when COVID first started not so long ago in late February, the world's largest internet companies, and I'm talking about the Googles, the Facebooks, the Amazons, uh, all of them actually had a fair bit of pressure on their stock prices. And a lot of them were off their highs for about a month or two. Folks weren't quite sure what was going to happen in this COVID time. But like you say, when you fast forward today in July, it is very clear what's happened. In many ways, just like Demon was the changing moment, if you will, for digital payments in this country, COVID will serve to be that Demon moment for many sectors like education. Because what's happened in this short period of four months is behaviors have changed. More consumers are now coming onto the internet in order to stay connected with friends and families and to buy products and services. More businesses are forced to bring their businesses online because physical stores just can't be uh, reached anymore. So when that behavior change happens, it's a very structural change that's happening in one direction. And the broad gainers are all technology companies that have products that they deliver and service online. If you looked at you know, the industrial sector or the real estate sector or the financial services sector also, none of them have actually come back to their pre-COVID levels. But globally, the technology index is not just back to its pre-COVID levels, but in many companies is actually higher than what its pre-COVID levels were. And education, to your point, is one of the biggest beneficiaries. Ever since COVID has started, we've seen a three to four X increase in the number of people who are actually coming online to take live classes. This is across all players, like you mentioned. Uh, traditionally, online education was towards the higher education, the later stage classes. But as the transaction that you referred to earlier with the uh, White Hat and Baiju, Baiju's, clearly all categories of online education are now coming alive. The number of search string result, uh, results that Google reports for people looking for programming classes online has grown 2x to 4x in the last three to four months. And honestly, while all this is good, this is serious disruptive change for the entire education ecosystem. Think of all those teachers that you and I both know. Think of all those coaching classes that existed in an offline element. Teachers of India and of the world have to rethink, reimagine, to see how they can now be effective in an online environment. The number of companies that will now get built on the back of providing tools and, uh, and uh, you know, solutions and software, which will be adopted by schools and teachers worldwide, so that they can be more effective online teachers is about to go through an inflection point. So the entire ecosystem of education will see a very strong uh, wind in its back over the next decade. And, uh, you know, I'm sure, Mohit, you also agree with that. And uh, Baiju's is therefore an example that uh, all of India must be proud of. It's the world's most valuable 
ed tech company and like you correctly pointed out it has shown immense maturity in going out and acquiring white hat doing it diversifying by doing it with an acquisition uh, so were you guys uh, very happy when you were approached as shareholders saying this is the future of byju's yeah you know my partner gv serves uh, and represents us at sequoia on that board he's much closer to that particular situation but absolutely look our mantra at sequoia is uh, is to back founders and i'm sure decisions like these are made after much deliberation which in this case would be byju and his phenomenal management team uh, so we as shareholders of course are incredibly supportive of anything that our founders want to do in terms of expanding their business you know i also have you here because we've seen so much excitement uh, for the startup universe you know you you of course have white hat and byju today recently for example it was about beardo and marico you're going to have one of the largest ever startup events that is being hosted offline uh, where your super boss the global chief of sequoia capital is going to be there you're going to interview him you have the founder of zoom who's doing a keynote you have some of the world's largest investors that are going to be a part of it you have nearly 10 unicorns that are going to be mentoring 8 to 10 founders that have been selected over dinner all of this is also showing a big sign of maturity so i wanted to ask you mohit that on this side of the planet uh, would you say that india has now emerged as a f- formidable destination when it comes to the startup ecosystem i'm not saying are we the silicon valley of the east but are we at least leading in the eastern ha- hemisphere look uh, this india internet day is going to be quite different in many ways it's going to be an online only event and the size is going to be uh, very large in terms of the number of people attending it uh, the number of companies globally that are participating in it uh, and uh, it's probably only it's it's uh, appropriate i should say that a internet event is being run only online uh, driven by the covid times uh, we actually had a lot of fun putting together the event agenda because what we really focused on was to try and crystal ball a little bit as to what sectors what specific themes might drive the internet over the next 10 years and as you look forward in the next decade beyond the current uh, uh, speed bump of covid and when we put together you know panels and sessions on education on health tech on financial services on enterprise software as a business on the digitization of smbs on ott and entertainment players and so on and so forth we found phenomenal uh stories that emerged from the different startups as well as constituents in each of these different sectors and each one of them had this very how should i say a very differentiated unique as to how india's internet might sort of play out differently than in other parts of the world so for example uh, as we might know in e-commerce today most of the growth in our e-commerce uh, players is being driven by rural india by small town india now clearly that user is not as familiar with english clearly the way that user buys is going to be very different than perhaps what how you and i buy online 5 or 10 years back and one of the interesting trends that we picked up from uh, folks at google for example is the number of voice searches rather than typed in searches on google is growing way faster in india than any other part of the world and so the way people in india will consume the internet will be quite different and still large but still quite different from how it has happened in many other parts of the world so you know going forward then and now i'm going to ask you questions that a lot of founders startups will be looking uh, for help from call it free advice if you want uh, mohit patnagar but since you are here on the show and startups are reimagining founders have had to give up on their old dreams maybe and you know plan uh, new business models etc they are now at a time that if they are around they p- perhaps have extended their cash runway they have managed to survive now perhaps it is about further reinvention that they have to do reimagine it a lot more so having said that i'm sorry to sound so generic uh, but what would your advice be to them there's a lot that has been learned but going forward it's still scary times you're not completely out of the woods yet and the potential and the price is of course so large it's a great question um we have this line we use at sequoia which i think we really believe in because we've seen it work over and over again 
and that is never waste a downturn. And what that basically means is once you've secured your runway and once you've fundamentally you know, stabilized the ship after the rocky February, March period when COVID was hitting all of us, this is certainly the time for you to try and reimagine and rethink what the next two, three years could be for your startup. The amount of opportunities that exist in each of these sectors that I just walked through is immense, Nantar. I'll give you a few examples. Let's say you're in the healthcare space in India. Historically, most of us have actually found the need to go and physically meet a doctor, to go into a hospital. COVID has forced all of us to try and use teleconsultations, remote consultations over video, voice, chat with doctors in order for us to sort of meet our healthcare needs. It's a one-time shift that the healthcare industry has seen in terms of patients being willing, willing to accept a digital way to interface their healthcare needs. Today, in many ways, like I said, the demon moment for healthcare has happened with COVID, where there is a great opportunity for India to create a fantastic national health infrastructure where things like patient data records are kept safe, privacy of patient data is kept safe, uh, and a lot of the building blocks are put into place so that India can actually service millions of people with a limited set of its doctors using technology. Without COVID, it would have been hard for someone to change the behavior of how patients wanted to be treated by doctors. But because of COVID, I see a massive acceleration in a lot of digital health startups that will come out uh, in this world. For example, there's some very exciting companies that are going to be showcased in the different panels on India Internet Day. Companies that basically use sensors on human bodies and then use artificial intelligence to sort of make sense of what those sensors are telling them to actually, be ready for this, reverse serious diseases like diabetes. Can you imagine that? We're not talking about managing a disease like diabetes, but using technology and balancing what you eat can actually help you reverse some of these very serious illnesses. So I see a very, very vibrant future for young startups who are willing to reimagine themselves in the space of health tech.